Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is a surprise video. Surprise to me, I mean. I was just sitting here. I drew what started as one card <laughs> for myself. I was just curious what I should know about for the upcoming solstice. I'm recording this on, you know, I don't even know what the day is. It's June 19th, so for me, that's one day before the solstice. And this is what I got, this Ascension card. And from there, I drew the rest of these cards, and as I was sitting here staring at them, I realized that there was something to be shared. So here I am. Um, I wasn't planning on making a video for a few more days because I am still very tired from the solar eclipse we had. <laughs> I don't even know when that was. Was that like a week ago? I think the moon was a half moon last night when I saw it, so it must have been about a week ago. Uh, so not tired in a bad way, just tired in a... I don't even know what's going on kind of way, but um, so these cards about the solstice Before I drew the cards. I felt that, that there was something strange going on with the, the poles or the hemispheres I was really curious because I've only ever lived in the northern hemisphere I've never even been to the southern hemisphere, but I was thinking about how for southern hemisphere people this is you know the winter solstice and I really have a strong connection with the winter solstice because I was born on it and uh, like on the northern hemisphere's winter solstice so I was really curious what is it what is it like what is it like for the, in the, the southern hemisphere to experience the cancer solstice for that to be in winter I, w I was just so curious because they're in that moment of you know the longest night right that period of the light receding and then returning and I was wondering what that was like and I, I just realized that I could feel that it doesn't matter what side of the planet that you're on that maybe in the past it has mattered more maybe in the past we have been more divided or disconnected or just more attached to the like pole that we're closer to but I really started to feel that there's some kind of melding going on and that the solstices are are becoming like one thing, right? Becoming one whole, that the solstice is now about the whole planet, not just like the whole axis, right? The whole polar axis is now experiencing this together and it doesn't have to be this separated thing between north and south, nor like, um, and winter and summer, Cancer and Capricorn even. So this Cancerian solstice, I feel is really pulling together with the Capricorn energy. And, uh, what does that have to do with these cards? I'm not really sure, but as for these cards, so, uh, I feel like we have three categories going on. I didn't, I didn't ask anything when I was drawing the cards. I just pulled them out and this is what I got, but we have three columns about three different themes. That first card I showed you, this is what's kind of going on with the theme of ascension. This second column is what's going on with the theme of the body, ask body, ask your body, what's happening with our bodies. And as you can see, this is feline energy. I, I suppose this is must be a leopard um, with the, this leopard's third eye just lighting right up. And the third eye is actually on the top of their head. So it's kind of like a third eye is melding with the crown. And then the third theme, death, transformation. How can we transform? What are we transforming? What messages are coming through for us about rebirth, right? Rebirth. So I think I actually want to start on this side because um, Mercury retrograde, I always seem to do everything backwards. So what are we transforming? What are we transforming? My will to thy will, breath of the cosmos. It was really funny that I drew this card because I was thinking about it just an hour ago when I was lazing around in my bed. <laughs> I felt like more, I've probably said this over and over and over again. I mean, I, it's a constant theme for me. You know, we're, all, we're, all we're doing these days, right, is releasing, letting go, releasing that that does not serve us and <laughs> letting go of the past, letting go of old energies. It's like a constant thing, right? But it's like even more right now, even more. Like again, this is again a huge, huge thing, especially because we've already got like Saturn and Pluto and Mercury all retrograde and Jupiter's going retrograde on the same day as the June solstice. 
<laughs> and it was funny, I was sitting around going, man, this energy feels so much like summer of 2020 when we had that crazy, you know, the infamous triple conjunction retrograde between Saturn, Jupiter and Pluto when they were all on top of each other and were retrograding, right? And I felt like um, the energy right now felt kind of like that, but less, a little bit less intense, but still just as slow. And then I realized, oh my God, it's even though those planets aren't conjunct anymore, Saturn and Pluto are already retrograde and Jupiter is about to go retrograde. So it's going to be kind of the same thing. And it feels like we are getting a chance to like relive in a small way what we all experienced last year around this time. But without the trauma, it's like we get to we get to heal it, right? Whatever traumas we all went through a year ago, we're healing that now and getting a little bit of a re review of it, but not not reliving, reliving it again. And part of what we need to know is this is a huge opportunity to drastically drastically trust drastically trust that that's that's it every every solstice i i feel a like an affirmation come through that i that i feel that i just end up end up repeating to myself on the couple of days around the solstice and i realized this morning that i nothing had come to me yet for this one <laughs> but that, that 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 that's what it is drastic trust drastic trust breath of the cosmos and we can lean into the drastic trust by no longer having a separation between our spiritual experiences and our daily life experiences. My will to thy will, knowing that every moment of our every day, the minutia of our experience is, you know, some people would call that living in a constant state of meditation. Some people would call it living in a constant state of prayer. Um, whatever it is, right? L living in a constant state of connection. That's really all it is, connecting with all of the parts. There's another theme here. It, it, this solstice is about the relationship between the parts and um, that's how we bring peace. That is how everything comes together by understanding and repairing the relationships between all the different things. So on an individual level, that's the relationship between like your mind, your heart, your body, your soul, your shadow, like right, all of your pieces, um, even getting the pieces of your body interconnected and then the, the, the relationships between you and your family and then the relationship between you and the collective and then the relationship between you and all of your parallel selves, right? It's the relationship between all of the parts is how we create a network. That once we, once we feel connected, we need to feel connected. That is how we can let go of our um, worries uh, for one thing and our desire to micromanage events in our lives as another thing because those things, those are the things we do because we because we don't trust, right? Because we're in fear, because we think we need to protect ourselves. But if we can lean into drastic trust, then we're leaning into this breath of the cosmos, living every moment, knowing that every moment is perfect. Something that used to really bother me, because I, I, I was like, okay, if I have free will, and I create my reality and I choose all my own experiences, then how can anything be perfect? Then that, that, that made me feel like, oh, I need to really worry to make sure I'm doing the right thing because I have free will, right? If I have free will, then I need to worry about doing the right thing. But because the, the idea, the, the knowledge that there are multiple timelines, infinite timelines, right? Had me worried, like, I gotta make sure I'm in the best one. Like there's some timelines have to be more perfect than others. And while it is true that some timelines are more enjoyable than others, Every timeline that you can find yourself in, every situation you can find yourself in, I, I, this is what I realized about, you know, for myself, is that it's all perfect, right? Even if I end up, even if I make a mistake, which isn't really a mistake, it, <laughs> it's just a choice I made, if it ends up in a, in a place that I feel that I don't like, all I need to remember is that this is just a temporary unpleasantness and that it will end up, it is still perfect, right? There is a place in the cosmic web for every single timeline. They can all, all be perfect. All of the timelines are perfect and they all weave together, creating a greater tapestry. So we don't need to worry about aligning with an imperfect timeline. There are no imperfect timelines. There are only perfect timelines because together they're creating something that is beyond our ability to visualize, at least yet, <laughs> right? Um, our higher selves or maybe our oversouls can visualize it, but maybe we can't right now. Um, yeah, determination. <laughs> the, 
this is half of Cancerian energy, isn't it? Or this is a beautiful merging of Cancerian energy in general because interestingly, right, this is a golden card, a yellow card representing the solar plexus. Um, but yet, look how feminine this card is with this gushing, rushing water, this beautiful waterfall and this salmon, the salmon leaping up the rivers. Like to me, the, the frequency of salmon, where, where, where I live, salmon are incredibly important. Like, where, where I live in the Pacific Northwest of North America, right, the West Coast of Canada and the Northwest Coast of the U.S. Um, and Alaska, um, salmon are, are so like... So I, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain how important they are there. Like, so I know, I feel a lot about salmon, um, you know, because they, they go out into the ocean, at, they are born in a river, they go into the ocean and then they come back transformed and then they swim up to the river somehow finding where they were born and then they sacrifice themselves, um, you know, and lay their eggs, they sacrifice, and then they die, they like, you know, they die for the next generation and they are intensely transformed. Their bodies go through this crazy transformation process when they are, you know, spawning, right? Um, and, and it's just incredible that what, what salmon accomplish. And I, I really feel that the frequency of salmon is such a beautiful Cancerian energy to tune into because with Cancer energy, there is that it's it's the twin stream it's the balancing of masculine and feminine right the masculine solar plexus and then the inner feminine gushing water and you know what i have been uh, i think in private readings with a few people i've had weird messages come through where it was almost like their solar plexus and sacral chakra will be coming one like fusing together um in a way that I would see that, you know, the orange of the sacral chakra is going to be surrounded by the yellow of the solar plexus chakra and it's becoming one and that is healing to both chakras and it just fuses into like a chakra that is greater than, greater than the sum of its parts. And, you know, I'm, I don't know if that actually happens with anybody's chakras, um, but, you know, the, you can just feel into the, the theme of that, right? The metaphor of that, the symbolism of that, the, the, the masculine and feminine energies coming together to be fused into one um where you have this balance of this rushing water flow passion um but and compassion and love right the frequency of salmon consciousness is is so compassionate so so loving and so sacrificing but is also so active so determined and always accomplishes what it sets out to do. So I feel <laughs> that this is like the merging of the inner and the outer. I was also thinking about this earlier today. Don't really know how to exactly make sense of it, but I felt like you know, the idea of, you know, duality, right? Two things, binary versus unity, right? Unity, one thing. Like, duality and unity, duality and unity is in itself a duality. Does that make sense? <laughs> is, it, is it is it in itself a duality? And, and I think so much about introverts versus extroverts because I'm a really, really introverted and my husband is really, really extroverted. So that is like a whole theme that we have going on. And of course, you know, being into spiritual things, I think a lot about the inner world versus the outer world. And then I, I keep feeling that on some level, we will be coming into a phase where there is no difference, where you can actually not just intellectually see the inner and the outer as the same, but really feel it and embody it, like feeling that really feeling the law of one, right? Feeling your soul go beyond your body and starting to recognize your own soul in everything outside of yourself so that when that happens, you're kind of like the salmon, right? The salmon where you understand that death is just a beginning, right? Death is just a transition. Death, death, death is just a process. It is, death is exactly as much of, much a part of life as life is. So for some people, um, anybody who has had an experience with some kind of 
really intense severing or breakup or separation or even in fact a physical death in their life um somebody is going to be coming into healing on that by by coming into a really really intense deep understanding of death energetics <laughs> and um yeah the energetics of death that death is just rebirth and transformation and uh look being able to see that in many many fractals in our environments so i think that's my rant on that <sighs> what is going on with our bodies so yeah this card ask body first of all i saw um i think it was the ninth dimensional arcturian council as channeled by daniel scranton my favorite who i always talk about <laughs> um they mentioned uh that they are going to be sending to the earth collective uh upgrades to our third eye over the solstice so yeah <laughs> i've actually already been seeing that um i started taking re reishi mushroom a week ago um, I did like a digestive cleanse first and then I started taking reishi mushroom and honestly I thought all of the talk about reishi mushroom was I was like ah this stuff's not gonna work like I, I, I was skeptical right I was I was still skeptical about, about reishi mushrooms because my husband takes lion's mane mushrooms and he swears by it he thinks it's great he thinks it like totally cleared all the slu sludge out of his brain and I've taken it it did nothing for me I didn't notice anything at all so I was skeptical about reishi but let me tell you guys wow the experiences i've been having on reishi it's like being high without being high like it, it like yeah it really does increase your light quotient like i saw people make that claim and i was like there's no way but it is i've had really incredible experiences on reishi in just the last week and uh i've been i've been receiving and like seeing images with much more lucidity and frequency and receiving receiving them like when I ask for them and receiving them right away it's really crazy so I'm already feeling the upgrade to our third eye but there's also something going on um with our heart chakra here right empathic star seed energetic sovereignty absorbing what's not yours and this heart chakra card with forgiveness so I mean cancer season right we're all going to be having all of the feels So just looking at this, I don't think I'm the only one who's been increasingly sensitive lately. And I don't just mean emotionally sensitive. I mean like psychically sensitive and just fucking sensitive on every level, like a, like a massive increase. And I've been noticing it's because uh, like I have so many layers of shielding and baggage and energetic blocks have all been have all been like falling away from me and from everybody else. And we're, we're so we're, we're our heart chakras are not entirely cleared not yet i don't think <laughs> um but because you know we're, we're not most of us i mean maybe a couple of you are but most of us aren't walking around like just feeling the purity of source consciousness and unconditional love for every being in the universe every moment of every day right i don't think most of us are there right yet if you are you probably wouldn't be watching my video because i would be so much more lower frequency than you right um but we are more open-hearted than we were and we are increasingly sensitive in every sense of the word and we are picking up other people's crap <laughs> so you know le le lessons here around boundaries but I, I i don't really think i think we might need to shift our perspective around boundaries and shift our perspective around forgiveness because forgiveness itself is binary forgiveness itself is do is like dual right it's a experience of polarity because if you have to forgive somebody else because they did something or if you have to forgive yourself which for most of us is harder right that forgiveness is the game of forgiveness only comes into play because we are judging right <laughs> if there is no judgment then there is no need for forgiveness and I remember when I was a little kid I always hated this thing of you know people having to drag apologies and there was this whole thing about I expect you to apologize and and then I ended up learning that I, I had to tell people, I expect you to apologize to me. And it was just like, why? I didn't understand the whole apology game when I was a little kid. And it, it bothered me and bothered me and bothered me. And I couldn't understand this whole thing about apologies. I was like, can't we all just realize? This is what I felt when I was a kid. Can't we just realize that we all just did the only thing we could do? And so what needs to be forgiven? I remember so clearly thinking this, like 
Everybody just did the only thing that was possible for them to do. That's it. So, like, why does there need to be an apology? Can't we just, like, recognize the, th the moment and move on? <laughs> but, of course, you know, social conditioning comes in, and now I, I'm in, like, the forgiveness and apology and game. And uh, it, now I understand that... It, that only ever happened because I was, you know, conditioned to be judgmental and therefore need to forgive and then therefore need to seek apology. And I think that, so first of all, there's an invitation here that instead of playing the, you know, judgment and forgiveness and apology game to just seek a higher perspective, which we are absolutely doing with this next column of cards. <laughs> so, you know, finding that higher perspective of just zooming your perspective out all the way up to source if you need to in order to find the perspective that you need to get out of the judgment forgiveness polarity but also there's just something going on here like physically with our bodies um anything bothering you in your body any feelings you are having in your body like including anxiety but it could also be physical pains um like this is because you are more sensitive, the grudges that we hold, because we are more sensitive, the grudges that we hold, the things we can't forgive, especially the things we can't forgive ourselves for, now we don't have the shielding to be protected from those things anymore. So now they're bothering us, like they're bothering us. They're coming up and we like need to let them go because in our new sensitive, like heightened in our new state of heightened sensitivity we like literally cannot be dealing with judgments and apology seeking and forgiveness playing and all of that because it, it's going to literally impact our bodies and manifest in, <laughs> in all kinds of unpleasant ways so like we just need to keep flushing this all the way it was funny earlier this week i woke up and i'd been having a really good week but I just woke up and I was like so, I'm like my feelings were hurt. I like literally woke up with my feelings hurt. And I just felt so like butt hurt and I was like, meh. You know, I was like, meh. <laughs> I was like mad at my husband, even though he hadn't done anything. And I, this is when I knew how I was being completely irrational because I looked at my, my little dog, my little chihuahua, my adorable little chihuahua whom I, I love to pieces and like, you know, my little dog. And I was mad at him. I was mad because he like, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, like I need to, I need to figure out what, like, what, what is my problem, right? And I, I was, I, all morning, I was just sitting there stewing about all these things that people had done to me, and I'm wham, 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 you know? <laughs> and finally, I got up, when my husband got up, I, like, I just, like, burst into tears, <laughs> and I had to, like, tell him about, you know, my feelings are hurt, and this, this, and that, and wham, wham, wham. <laughs> and then as soon as I expressed it, I immediately just felt completely better, and I was like, wow. I don't know. I don't know what that was. And he just looked at me and said, it's fine. You just needed to express yourself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, I, I guess that's what it was. And then I realized, okay, there was just like, you know, this, right? Because I am more sensitive now and especially like taking this reishi mushroom, right? It was like increasing my sensitivity even more. And it's in this weird period between the solar eclipse and the solstice. I was like, yeah, okay. So that was just some baggage, I guess, that I just needed to put, like get off my chest. And then it was gone, like gone, gone, gone forever. So yeah, you know, I, I just think it good for us to be aware <laughs> that if those kind of things are coming up, just just get them off your chest and then move, move on, right? Reclaim your energetic sovereignty. Don't let all of this um, past baggage keep you down because you're not being kept down. Literally, we got the Ascension card and this was, this was the first card I pulled for the solstice, like the theme of Ascension, right? Enough said. And the cards I pulled out below it, booyah. The golden children, inner child, tenderness, innocence, rare gifts. <sighs> this card I find a little bit difficult to interpret because it can go so many ways, right? There's so much here. So I'm going to take a kind of general approach. Look here, we got the great central sun. We got the portal. We have a portal straight through to the great central sun and out of it are these beings coming straight from source got rainbows solar upgrades 
That's what I just heard. Solar upgrades. I think this... Ha uh. It feels like another lid, like another level, another lid, another barrier just isn't there anymore. Like, if you think there's a ceiling above you, maybe you think there's a glass ceiling above you, but it's not even a glass ceiling. The ceiling isn't even there anymore. And maybe you're so used to just, you know, like a glass ceiling, maybe you can't see it, right? Because it's perfectly clear glass and you can't see it. So you got used to thinking, used to remembering that the glass ceiling was there, but like go up and touch it. It's not there anymore. That's not glass. It's just air. This reminds me of one of my cats. Um, she has to, she, she eats dinner in a cage because, um, I mean, she's my only cat now, but when we had two cats, um, she had to, she had to eat dinner in a cage because my other cat, uh, who was very old and he had to, you know, eat his special prescription food and he had to take his damn time eating. So he had to eat and she had to be separated. And the easiest way to do that was just to put her in the cage. And she like loves it, right? Even to this day, even though she's the only cat now, she runs into her cage to eat. And it's funny though, because sometimes I don't latch it closed all the way. I feel like I miss it, but she never, um, busts out of it because she has learned <laughs> that um, that it's closed, right? So if I forget to latch it closed, she never even tries to hit the door because she knows that it's latched closed, um, even if it's not, right? It's like that kind of learned helplessness thing where, you know, sometimes dogs, you don't need to, you can just put a like a rope around their neck. You don't even need to attach the rope to anything because they've learned that when they're tied up, they can't go anywhere. Something like this. Um, so if there is some kind of limitation that you think you have, and you haven't tested it in a while, <laughs> um, try again. This could even be, if you've, if you've never been able to do something before, even like singing, try again. You might find that you can mysteriously all of a sudden sing. But in terms of your, your consciousness, right? I, I thinking like the vertical column of ascension, whatever you call that. Some people call that like your Hara line. Some people call it the vertical column of power. Some people just call it your ascension column. You know, it's your vertical connection, right? The one that blasts all the way through you and all the way straight up through your crown and all the way up to source, right? That your vertical connection, your your vertical your vertical umbilical cord or whatever it is, right? The vertical cord. It's like it's getting powered up from wherever you were at before. For some people, it was like a smaller beam of light, like a flashlight. And now <laughs> the metaphor my guides are showing me is like your vertical column of power was a beam of light and it used to be like a little laser beam. And then somebody switched out the battery to a bigger battery and now it is like a flashlight beam. And what's happening right now is you're being switched out again to an even bigger battery. So now it's gonna be like a spotlight, right? <laughs> leveling up your connection and your ability to travel up and down along your own vertical column of power. Like that is your own pillar of light. You can use it to travel. It's your own railway back to source, right? You can travel, travel the way, the railway all the way up into this, you know, tunnel. You can go through this tunnel, travel. You can travel all the way wherever you want to go in that tunnel. And yeah, the final card. Angels and Masters. This card always makes me shiver. And I've only seen it uh, twice other times than right now. Here, here we have, yeah, again, here is the vertical column of power, right? All the chakras all lit up. The pillar of light surrounded by angel wings. Surrounded by the Masters. Number 33. I feel like this card is a reminder to reach out, like to call in, to call in the Archangels and the Ascended Masters because they are, you know, they are your family. I think sometimes we shoot lower <laughs> and we 
feel like we can't go all the way to the top, right? It's like you don't want to walk into the boss's room. You want to, you know, ask your supervisor instead. I feel like this is especially, especially with like all three of these cards, right? It's like, don't, don't stop if, with the middle management, right? You don't need to reach out to some fifth or sixth dimensional collective, right? When, when you could be going all the way to source, there, there is no intermediary between you and source. You are walking the path of mastery, whatever that means to you. And there is no difference between you and the ascended masters because we are all one consciousness, right? We, we tend to put everybody into boxes and say, oh, you know, I haven't meditated on top of a mountain for 800 lifetimes, therefore I cannot be like the masters. But the, it, it, anything one person can do, another person can do. There, there is no difference. We are all one thing. We are all just different faces of the same light source. And... Um, it is the linear mind. It is the linear mind that we need to be dropping out of because it is the linear mind that compartmentalizes us and separates us and says that we are different things and says, I can't do that. Only somebody else can do that. Um, and I just, I really, I really think that so many of us, like myself included, I, I used to feel like, oh, I had to get, uh, you know, guidance and inspiration and whatever from lower dimensional beings because I, I felt like I didn't know how to connect to source until I deliberately set about like facing that because I thought I realized that was weird right why do I feel like I can't connect directly to source why do I feel like I need these interdimensional beings to like play liaison for me right I realized that was weird um then what I found was that <laughs> you know the the light is within the light is within that that's it that's it and that 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 became the for over the last couple of months the, the 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 light within and knowing that the light within is literally literally like this isn't even a metaphor i mean literally the light of source is inside of every single being like literally and I'm, I'm not even being metaphorical and that has been the the like the theme the big theme for me over the past couple of months and that's what's coming up here kind of as a call for us to all dive into because we will ascend by remembering that, you know, the light and the portal and the mastery is within. And I think that's it. <laughs> so happy solstice, guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.